Hello, everyone. On this episode of the podcast, we had my good buddy Ty come on. He shared some good insight, and I hope you like it. So you've been studying a lot. You're uh, yeah. trying to get your pilot's license? Yep. I've been working a ton on my PPL and just trying to bang it all out now before summer, before hits. summer hits. Yeah. And what a better time, too, like with the whole COVID situation, COVID situation shut down and yeah what not how's that been you've been how many hours you have to put in a day lately i've been trying to put about five hours in like a couple hours in the morning a couple hours in the afternoon and Damn. not too much because then it's like a brain overload and you don't actually retain a lot of information i find yeah but if you don't do enough then you're not actually gonna learn that much i don't think so i'm trying yeah. to just find a happy medium of the right block yeah what um part of the process are you in? Like you've been. I'm like there. three quarters of the way done both, like the online, okay, the ground school part of it, and the hands-on flying part. Like I have three quarters of my hours, and on like the, it's like a tick box, I guess you could call it, on the side, and I'm like 70 percent done. Okay. The online. Yeah. Yeah, about to crack it. About to crack it. So I'm learning all about navigation and maps and yeah how to read them and how they're projected from the globe onto a piece of paper so like some oh it's i could go on forever about <laughs> it but like it. yeah it's it's a whole crazy thing because some are like a flat so yeah. like the north and south poles are like super spread out and others are like a a coned yeah perception and then like you only look at a square of that so like like the isogenic lines that go from north to south pole are like still kind of curved on that wow. even though they look flat on the on the map yeah it's hard to explain it. is that gonna do you think you're gonna be able to use that when you're like looking at maps for slides? i don't think shit? so because everything's so like digital nowadays with four flight you just look at it and it shows you like everything calculates your ground speed tells you your yeah your yeah it tells you everything you need to know but it is cool to learn about how the ogs used to do it about yeah maps and flipping it and having other maps in your back seat ready to go with your line drawn and like you have to like find visual reference or otherwise you're gonna get lost yeah and like getting lost without a gps flying around would be pretty scary dude it'd be trippy so you're pretty much learning it but knowing that like once you're done you're just gonna revert to like the new technology kind of thing yes and no like what if your phone dies or something <laughs> yeah. like it's good yeah, to know backups. it's up yeah, yeah like it's really good to know know what's up yeah while you're out there mm -hmm. are you nervous about all that stuff yeah i am yeah. <laughs> i'm pretty nervous about it all yeah just you know like it's such a crazy thing just flying around in a bush plane that you want to like know your stuff and keep you and your people that you're with safe yeah special cargo yeah yeah it's good though like i yeah. feel like the nerves as much as like you don't probably like the feeling like it's good to have them because it keeps you really tight you exactly know? yeah yeah yeah. And it's so cool to learn something all over again, for almost from scratch. Like, yeah, it like takes my mind off snowboarding for a little bit while yeah. like throughout my couple knee surgeries I've had to go through and stuff. So like, it's just so good to have something so fresh and like something that like yeah. you don't have to rely so much on your body for it. Like, exactly. I feel like I'll be able to fly as long as I want, as long as my vision and I stay healthy and stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of evergreen. Like yeah. you can go as long as you. Yeah. Is that kind of what sparked it though? Is looking for something to. Yeah, looking for something that like I can still have a lot of fun with. That's a cool tool. Yeah. And like out here in the mountains, like everything is so far apart for how close it is. Just because driving around the mountain and stuff, like yeah, it, like Pemberton to Squamish in the plane is only like twenty minutes, so yeah. it's pretty Freaking. cool for that. Like to go to Tofino, it's only an hour and stuff. Like it makes everything. Yeah. So much closer. Yeah, you your like your world really opens up. Mm -hmm. Everywhere, gets, mm -hmm. like, so and I feel like it's a pretty good move. General aviation, I feel like it's gonna grow quite a bit because of the COVID stuff. I don't know like how much they're gonna change travel, and like I've heard some crazy things that like they're you're gonna need vaccinations to travel, and if you don't have a vaccination, the whole airport process is so much. No, earlier because you have to like show up a couple hours earlier and go through a bunch of testing and stuff i don't know how true all that is but i feel like yeah people are gonna but like having that fly around by themselves more <laughs> yeah having like, the freedom you'll just yeah. be able to do your thing yeah yeah did it help that like 
we have a bunch of homies that have planes and stuff. Yeah, so it did. Fire. It really, they really sparked the interest. Yeah. Like sparked my fire, I guess you could say for flying because it's so cool and you can have so much fun with it. And like, it is yeah. such like a cool thing, you know, Charles Reed and Roy Bushfield, they're both badass pilots and I look up to them a lot for flying. They're yeah. pretty, pretty on point. You've been dreaming about like just thinking about taking the planes over to Tofino. Yeah, I mean, I've been like when you're studying, you're always thinking, keeping your stoke going to keep studying because yeah. it's hard to just be in the books a ton for hours and hours and hours and not fly too much. Yeah, like, but you know, it's obviously going to pay off because I think <laughs> yeah. about like all the time I have to invest in studying compared to like the rest of my life for flying. It like doesn't even compare. Yeah. Probably a good skill too. Like, yeah. I mean, when did you stop kind of going to high school? I was like, I somehow got my grade twelve, but like, yeah. I didn't really go too much the all of high school. Like, yeah. I kind of started traveling a lot for snowboarding in grade eight ish, and then throughout high school, like, I was only there like handful of days a week, if not like a handful of days a month sometimes. Like. Yeah. But I had a pretty good tutor that would, like, really just give me the crunch, you know? Like, I just really? put a couple days in with him Shit. and get a lot done. And But honestly, it's, like, even working on my pilot's license after not going to school for probably five, seven years at least, like, it. I had to relearn how to learn straight up. Yeah. Like, like, writing stuff down and, like, reading it over again and, like, making other notes are from your notes and stuff like to actually retain the information and remember it a month from now it's like i had to yeah that whole learn. process yeah, i feel like you probably care a lot more too or at yeah. least i would like yeah for sure in high school it was kind of like yeah just figure out how I to game it care, so you can get yeah. through but this you'd like you want to have that information in your head so you're trying to figure out ways to like keep your shit tight and, yeah you taking like log books and shit of all your studying or yeah. like notes and stuff? Well, I'm not like logging my hours of studying, but like I have a log book for my time in the plane, obviously. And I have, I have like, I think seven notebooks now filled from front to back page of just notes and stuff. Damn. That's respectable. Mm -hmm. Crazy. When do you think, if it all goes well, when do you think you're in the air, like solo? Um... I think I'll be able to get my license. I'm hoping for four weeks from now. Four I'll weeks. be able to write the test, and by then I'll be done. Because I only need like 10 more hours flying okay. in the plane. Yeah. Maybe 15, I think, 40, 45 minimum hours. Yeah. And I'm like 31. So, like, it's not, it's just like just a handful of days of flying. My instructor wants to do three hour blocks. And yeah. What's the hands-on learning been like? Like the learning that's actually in the plane. Is that stressful or is it? Um, yeah, it's pretty scary. Like you have to put a lot of trust in your instructor because yeah. some things just feel so wrong and like they're like, some things just feel crazy. Like, oh man, I can't even explain it. Their instructors are just so good. Like yeah. they just have so many hours and so much finesse with the plane. It's my, uh, my dad told me about this one instructor he had He's like ex-military guy and super hard ass. And he said like he'd look you dead in the eyes before they went flying. He's like, I'm not dying today. Shit like that where he'd be like really hard on him and just yeah. no bullshit. He said that was like added the stress on top. And then he had other instructors or like guys he flew with that were just super laid back. Yeah. But so it really probably depends. Like you want to have a guy that you can trust. But... Yeah, exactly. You want to have faith in your instructor. And yeah, you want to learn from your instructor obviously too. So you hope they're going to like teaching and yeah and be like yeah good with you and give yeah. give you the information you need to know yeah. so that'd be nice to have the plane because you're just um just sort of rounding your recovery no for yeah me, yeah <laughs> broke my patella like three months ago yeah and i just had a ct scan the other day and met with the a surgeon yeah and they had talked to my surgeon who did the surgery and they w looked at the CT scan together and we had a conference call and it like the bone looks like it's healed very well and wow. they were super impressed with how like underneath the kneecap how smooth it is and stuff because they were a little bit worried because it was in a couple of different pieces about how to put it back together uh -huh. and then not get too catch much or, yeah, or yeah. like underneath it too like the other pieces could be it's like putting a puzzle piece together with no 
table like, under it. So yeah. it's kind of like you just have to put it all together and then hope it heals right. God damn. And it did, so I'm thankful. Yeah, that's a It was a pretty wish. complicated surgery, they were saying. Yeah. Yeah, over the moon. Mm -hmm. I hear that really helps. Like, I remember when I broke my hand, they talked about like screwing it all together really helps mm -hmm. um, to not get like too much bone mass on the outside mm -hmm. of it and shit like that. Heals a lot better. Yeah. But that being your third one, was it like kind of overwhelming? It was happened? at first. Like, obviously, having two ACLs in three years, I was like, and I hurt my knee again. I was just devastated. I was like, oh my God. Looking at a whole nother year recovery is just tripping me out. I was like so devastated. Like yeah. felt sick to my stomach over it all. And then less than an hour later, they had the x-ray done and they said, knew it was just a broken bone. And they're like, three months, you're going to be able to shred and do almost whatever you want. Like it's not going to take nearly as long as the other two. So yeah. Yeah, I've just been putting in a ton of work of working out and trying to build my muscle back now that it it's all healed and yeah good to go. Do you think it's been, I mean, it'd be like harder because of COVID being on, or do you think it's given you the time? Like, it's given me the time to just be okay with really doing nothing because <laughs> yeah. everyone, all my close friends, everyone's just doing nothing. So it's really been like a, almost like a weight off the shoulders to just. Be able to do nothing and feel okay about it and yeah. Cuts the have Jamie off. around a ton more and all my friends and stuff. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, because that'd be tough. Like, Jamie would have been traveling for a lot of the first two. Kind of yeah. Thing. Yeah. Was it tough to keep motivated when you were, like, like going, especially the first two, like, to keep on the strength stuff? For sure. Know? Straight up. It really was at times, especially the second one. I did, like, a full year rehab of yeah. just working the knee all the time and <clears throat> excuse me i was so over it straight up like when i hurt my knee the third time i was like i'm gonna quit snowboarding and i don't want to fucking do this to myself anymore like this sucks so bad and like just being in pain all the time and just having to just live the knee life yeah. try to make all your decisions around what's going to be the best for your knee and stuff it's just really got to me over some time and yeah um but to like as you get better and better like you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel and you're like okay i'm starting to feel good now like when am i gonna be able to shred and when's like when's this gonna be all healed and like like i'm just, like i've been snowboarding since my surgery i haven't like went out and shredded i just yeah. went and cruised but like i'm so excited to go sand again and yeah feels pretty feels really good especially with the whole covid thing not a lot of physio not a lot of yeah gym work and stuff true. like feels insanely well all things for considered. yeah all things considered yeah yeah you'd kind of like get on your board do a couple of turns and you still know what you went through but you kind of forget a little bit. yeah like, you do you, <laughs> like you're like okay this is sweet it feels good it doesn't hurt like this is awesome i love snowboarding yeah it's crazy what that'll do like just a couple turns and you're like everything's good like yeah. i'm back like so good yeah so wording's good for the soul it really is yeah yeah i i think i would have really struggled like just the length of those recoveries is really hard mm -hmm. like even now like looking forward we're like we don't really know when we're gonna snowboard again and i find it tough to be like still keeping like your routines of stretching and working out because you're like i don't know when the next time of riding is mm -hmm. so it's sick you like fucking hammered it through and you mm -hmm. got on board Cause I just didn't want to have a bad knee. Like I just wanted to like heal my knee, whether it's for snowboarding or for anything, you know, yeah. like I just want to have a good knee and a healthy body and for life feel yeah. good every day. Like even into my fifties and sixties or whatever, like I want to like try and take care of my body, especially after a couple of knee surgeries. Now I need to take extra care. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're trying to hold it tight. Be nice though. Like, feel like we you talking about there with it just kind of holds like a part of your brain for a long time mm -hmm. like you're always kind of making decisions around it It'd be nice to just be like okay now i'm making like decisions for like just tie mm -hmm. not tying my knee kind of thing mm -hmm. nice. and yeah since it's actually even been i got the news a couple of days ago yeah. that it's the bones healed it's all looks good and stuff that's also been another weight off my shoulders to be like okay bones healed it's good to go now i just need to build my muscle back and i can send again and, and it's yeah. gonna be good to go yeah you can trust in the the structure of it all. yeah 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 dude the kneecap 
it sounds gnarly. I'm happy that yours came back together. I know. Again. I'm stoked. Thank you. Yeah. Um, reading, I've read a lot about it, a bunch of different cases, and yeah, some healed super well, and some just never healed right. Yeah. And I was reading all these things, and it was just tripping me out when I was in the first couple of weeks of healing, and I was like, this is the worst. <laughs> like... <laughs> the worst like googling your symptoms it just yeah. tells you you're gonna die for sure <laughs> like fuck <laughs> yeah I know like Taylor Gold did it I think and Marcus Cleveland mm-hmm. but dude Taylor he was on one this winter and yeah it was like but it was two years for him I think before or even more I think it might have even been two and a half almost three years like yeah. that was a whole different situation though he was on a hard toe yeah. turn preseason and ripped his kneecap right off like it wasn't even Dude, that seems so crazy. Oh, so it was like Attacks. ligament damage and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, but I don't know like what kind of ligament damage, but I just know his kneecap got like ripped, ripped off. off. <laughs> Holy shit, yeah. dude, that is so crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yours is crazy because it just popped on impact. It just right? popped on impact, yeah. So like they, during my second ACL surgery, they did a quad tendon graft. Yeah. And they took like a little piece of bone out of the top of the kneecap. Right. To go into the ACL as a bone screw, so like they could just there's like a little hole that they'd put the new tendon through. Okay. Where the ACL is, you know, and then they have the piece of bone that goes into the hole at the end, and like uh, they don't need to use a screw. That's nice. So it's a really nice thing to have a bone plug in there. Yeah. And like the bone was supposed to just heal obviously in the kneecap but it didn't fill in right like they said when they went in there they could see that it was almost like a almost like a bit of like a like a honeycomb kind of texture like in the bone it wasn't like it was a different texture in the half pipe they called it because it was almost like a bowled out little horseshoe thing of bone they took out yeah and it was like a honeycomb in there and it, it just created a really weak spot yeah and um i remember the day before i did a cab nine and landed really hard on my heels and hurt it and i think i like pulled it or stressed it or like, like hairline fracture hairline fracture because it really hurt and then yeah. the next day i did a back 12 and landed perfectly and it just pulled the kneecap in half so like i think there had to have been Dude. a hairline crack because before I obviously competed, I was up in Black Park doing a ton of different stuff yeah. and putting it through massive impacts, and it was all good. Like it was, it was a proper rehab, and it was yeah. like healed. Took a year. The Canadian team was so, so gentle at first, and then pushed me so hard in the end, and I wasn't even allowed to go snowboard most of December. Yeah, and I was doing like the most intense workouts in the gym, and I was trying to wrap my head around like how like how am I not allowed to snowboard yet, but I'm doing all this in the gym. And yeah. it was, I guess, for a bigger purpose to not have another se- knee surgery. And I guess the bone just it was didn't allow for that. Thing. Yeah, the bone just broke. Yeah. But now with the screws and everything, like that, that they clean that old bone out and it's all healed up and the new screws are through there and the bone is all healed perfectly and it's good to go. Yeah. You're freaking jacked, dude. You just ripped it in two. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. yeah but yeah you put in the work to keep it strong that's a crazy story dude crazy story yeah just pulled her in half yeah what was it? yeah was it hard dealing with like having you know you're you're taking in so much input from so many different people and like then you have to like look at your knee and like make your own calls and- yeah it was well, honestly, like, okay, so I landed the back 12, and then I was yeah. going into the next jump, and then I was like, okay, wait, what the hell just happened to my knee? No way, it wasn't my ACL, like, this is a weird thing, like, what just happened? Yeah. And then, like, I'm already on the takeoff to the jump, and I was gonna do a cap 14, and I was just so, I guess, in flow state, I wasn't really <laughs> yeah. thinking about my knee, I was just thinking about what's in front of me, Yeah. and as soon as I took off, I was like, oh my god, this is not not okay and then i landed and kind of just put all my weight on my okay leg and then i was like okay i'm gonna do a little bit of a a test and i'm gonna put some serious weight into this and see how it is and and it just gave out right away i fell over and i just knew i was like oh my god what happened what happened and i could feel like something was seriously wrong with my quad it felt like and i pulled my snow pants down and on top of my uh 
my knee, it looked like if you cut a lacrosse ball in half, it was just like a horseshoe shaped in here. No way. Yeah, and like if you, the other side of the lacrosse ball was like quarter way up my quad on the inside. Oh and it was God. just a big ball. And I was just sitting there with my snow pants on. And I could like, I had so much adrenaline going. I could flex the muscle and I could see underneath the kneecap where the stuff was like pulling on the skin, you know, like I could see the yeah, tendons yeah, yeah. and some skin was caught underneath and it was like wrinkling around where it was pulling and it just oh, looked so man. gnarly. And I had no idea what happened. And the first two times I hurt my knee to get yeah. ACL surgery, it wasn't bad at all. Like I kept snowboarding the one day yeah. and then the next time I rode down the rest of the mountain, like it didn't feel that bad. Yeah. And I was looking down at this like, oh my God, this is <sighs> serious. Like ACL is nothing. This looks like it's going to be a five year recovery. This is like, <laughs> what did I just do to my knee? And then I got in the, I like, the ski patrol comes over and I'm like looking at it and I just pull my snow pants off. I'm trying not to think about it. And I can see my mom off to the side and oh, trying not man. to freak her out. And ski patrol's like, let me like, let me see. And I like show him and he gasps. He's like, is that supposed to look like that? No. And I was like, <laughs> and then I just pull my pants back on and I'm trying not to talk to him because I'm just so bummed. And like, yeah. I'm, like he's not helping me. Like I, yeah, he's, he's like, freaking he's out. freaking out. And I'm like, <laughs> and he's like, is it supposed to look like that, mate? And I was like, bro. Don't call me mate. And no, it's not supposed to look like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. does your knee look like that? And I, it was hard to not have some serious attitude because I was just like, what well, just dude, happened to my knee? Yeah. Anyways, they put me on this toboggan and they're taking me down. And then I see Mikey Cicerelli and Jeremy Shepard, our strength coach, running up. And I was like, boys, man, I'm done. I tore my quad off my knee. That's and then I thought I tore my quad off my knee because yeah. it didn't make sense to have any bone. I thought like... yeah. Like I thought I just, just pulled off the kneecap. Like I've heard of that happening and I was yeah. also thinking like how on earth are they gonna put my quad back on my knee? Like I've heard that with Achilles too. Like that's a pretty it's hard heavy man. one and and I pulled out my snow pants because I tell Jared, I was like, Bro, I ripped my quad off my knee and he's like, No, you didn't, no way and I show it and he gasps too and I was like, Man, like something's seriously wrong in there and it hurts <sighs> so bad and then like to get from the toboggan into the wheelchair and the wheelchair into the ambulance and it all just hurt so bad. Like I couldn't even my leg was straight and I couldn't even lift my heel off the ground. Like I couldn't even think to do that. Like any yeah. little bit of quad movement just hurt so bad. Because I guess it would just like pull on the kneecap. Oh, I don't know. It just hurts just all missing in there and shit. Man, it hurt so bad and even since then, I've been dealing with quite a lot of knee pain, like, just in the evenings. Yeah. It just doesn't really matter what I do. It could be, like, five days of rain. All I'm doing is studying and stretching and rolling, not even trying to work out too much at the beginning, just trying to rest it, and it would still just hurt so bad. And it now that it's been a little bit over three months, it doesn't hurt as bad, and it's really, like, I can still do a lot of activities and dirt bike and mountain bike and work out heavily and, like... Yeah do a lot of stuff and it doesn't hurt as bad as even when I was chilling. So I have faith that it's only going to continue to get better and not. Yeah. And, and you not, feel like you're still in the up and up. Yeah. Like I'm still, I'm still on the come up. Improving. Improving. You excited to get some summer sports in? Like, I am, summer, man. I am. I'm very excited. It's like the last summer I wasn't obviously healthy because my ACL and yeah. the ACL is such like like you're healthy you feel good but you're right. not allowed to do anything so it's almost torturous and now I feel ready to do some stuff but like I've already been like I was just saying dirt biking a bunch and mountain yeah. biking and I haven't even like used my dirt bike in two or three years really because of yeah. all my knee stuff and now that the bones healed and it's all feeling good I'm doing some pretty heavy workouts at home and Sick. trying to really yeah, beef up. Beef, beef the knee up and get it ready for some summer fun. So long. <laughs> <laughs> Snowboarding too. I hopefully uh, want to go down to Mount Hood and try and yeah. shred. And, but it just all depends if the border's open and what the situation. Yeah, I've been thinking about that too. I don't know. It'd be fun though, dude, if we did like an RV trip or like a camp trip. Big and... homie camp yeah. trip down the coast, surfing and going and shred and surf some more. Yeah. It'd be sick. Have you ever been to Hood before? I've never been. Oh, I've been to Hood on a spring shoot, but the okay. mountain was closed. Oh, so like okay. we just like 10 of us went and hiked around and just didn't get the Hood effect. I want to go yeah. to summer camp there. It looks so fun. Summer shredding is the funnest. Yeah. I love that shit. It is. Yeah. It'd be good if we get a crew down there, but it's... 
dude it's so unknown like it's so i don't even know when we're gonna find out but it, i guess it's i mean it means a lot to us but it's kind of small potatoes i guess mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things yeah like when can we shred it's like what about <laughs> like when the, when's the world gonna work again like yeah. when what, what's gonna happen well we're lucky too that like we don't have to travel to have a lot of fun shit like the whole sea to sky corridor is so sick so. exactly it's so good up here it's yeah it's nice to have all the different activities in the backyard you can go like it's crazy out here snowboarding and golfing and yeah like wakeboarding out you can do it all in one day it's crazy dude i mike did a nine holes of golf and then we went into the backcountry in the same day <laughs> <laughs> he was rotten i think he skated at the end of the day too yeah yeah, it's a cool place for that. That's awesome. Yeah, do you think you'd ever leave? No, you're locking in. I don't know. Like, I mean, it's pretty hard to beat the sea to sky, especially because I've been living here seven years. Yeah. Exploring very heavily. Yeah. And I'm still finding new stuff all the time and hearing of new things. And I'm like, it's just unlimited out here. Like, there's yeah. so much backcountry and so much unexplored terrain. Yeah. Never, Still, never see yourself going back to Ontario. You don't think? I mean, I always want to visit, but yeah. I don't think I want to live out there. I feel like yeah. I want to be in the mountains. And what's what's you're from North Bay, right? Yeah. What's it like? I've never never been that far. North Bay's sick. There's yeah. a lot of like lakes and rivers and ponds, and like there's just yeah. so much water out there. Like really flying over, you should see it. It's just like there's and a little bit south is Muskoka's, and it's even more yeah lake action. I've been up like as high as Aurelia. That's mm -hmm. about it. It's kind of cottage country. Yeah, so, cottage yeah. country. Yeah. North Bay is pretty fun. It's uh, like obviously not as much to do as to see the sky. It's probably yeah. like everyone's hometown. It's a lot, a lot more chilling and fishing and. Yeah. Are you north know. enough to be like kind of like Upper Ontario redneck style or? Is oh it... yeah. Oh man. really? North Bay is pretty. <laughs> north Bay is pretty. Uh, yeah redneck it's really fun and like i feel like that's why i'm like so into things like dirt biking and yeah. flying and machines and stuff because like that's what me and my homies did every day after school like yeah. we would dirt bike and four-wheeler and just always be out doing things and yeah trying to build moto jumps and like that was our skate park you know like we, yeah. like our road was like the worst it was like not gravel but not paved it was like such hard pack yeah dirt so like growing up on a dirt road essentially like oh so you can just burn we, down it yeah we didn't like skin. skate and things yeah. like oh yeah like yeah you don't have unless you got a carport you're not yeah gonna, yeah go down the road and do a kickflip your yeah. deck won't move kind of thing yeah yeah no you can tell though it's, it's like it looks like just from the way you handle anything with a motor <laughs> it looks like it's been under you for quite a while yeah i actually my my dad's so awesome he was always like me as a kid and just wanted to play and yeah dirt bike and just get after it and i actually got a snowmobile from my, when i was two years old i didn't even <laughs> know what it was my mom has a, like a home video of me walking into the living room and it's like a mini one it's like a 100 skidoo it's a 120 mxz 120 and, yeah and it was like this tiny little yeah it was like oh man like between I, knee and waist height and yeah. like maybe two or three feet long and i'd just rip it every every day i ripped it until like i was probably seven or eight and I remember the guy opened the hood and looked at me and my dad. He's like, was this thing on fire? <laughs> it was just black on the inside from belt smoke and everything. Yeah. And my dad's like, yup, he's hard on things. It was so funny. That's sick. So funny. You must be able to, you ever get hang times on that thing? My neck sled, <laughs> I moved up to a Grand Touring 380. Okay. And I was jumping that thing a lot more. Really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I like those, like, I've ridden some like Scandic 400s and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, so fun. They're so much like they're so small and nimble, and you yeah. like rip them around. Big windshields though, usually. Long valleys, <laughs> like they're so funny. Yeah, yeah, they're good. It's funny how capable they are too. Like you yeah. rip one around, you're like, I mean, you can't couldn't go anywhere out here, but like, no, it's fun to have. It's so crazy. Like my first, like my first mountain slide out here. Looking back and seeing, I was a three, four <laughs> feet of tunnel. Yeah, and now my slide is probably even five feet longer than what I grew up in. Like, yeah, like, I ride a long track and 
What's the track on the Polaris? 163. 63. Yeah. Yeah. They're thinner. And I think like the sled I grew up on was a 120. 120? Like track, 121 yeah, yeah. inches. Yeah. I think. Oh, dude, that was probably good for that time too. Yeah. I'd be like... Half inch paddle. Now we're <laughs> running like three inch paddles. Yeah. Yeah, sledding back, you know, East Coast is so much different than out here. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. going fast on lakes and yeah. trails and stuff. It's sick there though. Like I drove from Ottawa to, to Ontario this past winter and dude, it was just like sled tracks all down the highway. Like dudes just ditch bang, go house to house. Like it's way different. It's way different. Yeah. Like, like you're just saying, I used to ride my sled over to my friend's places and yeah. it all the time. Like every night I just pull up by you know, my, the dirt bike or sled and get them That's and sick. we'd go out and get other friends and it was a really cool system. Like trails just it's, everywhere like if you yeah. imagine doing that in Whistler imagine if I <laughs> left my place on my sled and took yeah. a trail around to here but there's just mountains you so it's yeah. way harder to yeah create it seems trails loose in the now valley. like they'll just rip them down the side of the road like True. imagine just west side just in your head. <laughs> <laughs> so funny yeah I wish but it would I feel like the, those well actually I don't know but are the east coast sleds a little quieter than the mountain sleds thing depends some people are always putting cans on here yeah. and there and berries big time yeah yeah the mountain slides they put out some they sound good when they're mm-hmm. open nice and loud though yeah cool cool dude thank you for coming Ty. i really it's a pleasure man I, i've been meaning to we've talked about it a couple times now and yeah i was like okay i've got to do it i got to do it <laughs> yeah yeah no you shared some really good insight i think people will be super stoked boom Cool. Okay, I've been wondering this. How does this pull out? Straight this way. Okay, yeah. Right, <laughs> oh, like, yeah, you're looking at this. I was looking at it like the there's no way. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I want to thank Ty again for coming on. I appreciate him sharing those stories, and uh, I hope you found some value in it. Um, I thought I'd finish this one off with a couple podcasts I've listened to recently that I quite enjoyed. Uh, started off with a classic JRE shout-out, Joe Rogan. Um, number 836 with Hannibal Buress. Uh it's pretty funny they get quite intoxicated and that's pretty much the gist of it and then the last is the bomb hole uh, listen to a couple they've all been really good if you haven't heard give it a go if you feel like it you can do it John. anyways alright thank you for listening and I'll see you soon